Good day, day students. Uh, this is uh, your professor, Manuelito San Jose, and we are now in our third lecture in our subject, Ethics and Moral Philosophy. Now, this time around, we are going to look at the relationship between ethics, religion, and law. As you can see, um, ang ethics, ang religion, ang batas, they are all uh, to a certain extent trying to moderate human conduct or define what is a lovable behavior. Okay? So, you will see that there are points of interaction here. There are also points where these uh, uh, disciplines and uh, very different fields, okay, are interacting with each other and overlapping with uh, the boundaries are not really very clear in when it comes to some areas so uh, katulad na lang halimbawa that uh, there is in uh, Saudi Arabia and Arab countries that uh, their law the law of the land is somehow dictated upon or influenced by the religion that they have and that is Islam so uh, they have what we call the Sharia law which is the um, the law that the civil authorities are are um, trying to to impose on people uh, not just for people who are a uh, member of the Islamic religion but for everyone who are there okay even if you are not Islam is a law that is derived from their religion from their faith that's why it's called the Sharia law it is a uh, uh, the law that law comes from uh, Sharia, their, their religion, Islamic religion. Uh, yeah, um, ethics and religion. Uh, you'll see here um, basic difference. Okay, so somehow, kasi uh, tingin natin when we talk about ethics and religion and the law, they are referring to almost the same thing, but there are minute differences. Okay, there are minute differences and sometimes uh, even if they seem to be minute differences or little differences that actually would um, really uh, give a, a, a big, there will be a very big impact. Okay, there's going to be a really very big impact there. No? Uh, uh, so, tignan na natin ngayon. No, no. So, now we now go to uh, our our next slide and in our next slide we're going to look at the basic relationship and uh, definition between uh, what is ethics and what is uh, what is religion and how do they um, connect or interact with each other so we'll go, we're going to see their uh, interaction points and we're also going to see um, basically how they are different. Now we are in religion and ethics. So dito tignan natin kung ano ang uh, mm, pagkakatulad ng dalawang ito at uh, kung saan din ito nagkakaiba at kung saan din sila nagkakaroon ng influence uh, to each other. Okay? So yeah, uh, malaki ang role ng religion sa uh, the formulation in the formulation of ethics and then at the same time Ethics will also define how a uh, uh, religious principle, moral principles, are supposed to be formulated. So, let's now move on to uh, the first one. Okay. So, here, religion and ethics may overlap. Ayan, sinabi na natin kanina that there are points of overlapping in both religion and ethics. And I think that uh, that place where religion and ethics are overlapping is the... Um, the formulation of precepts pag sinabi natin precepts these are norms or standard of behavior or laws that uh, will help a person to um, stay and uh, to stay to stay good okay um, to be able to to be able to uh, define uh, for himself alam niya kung ano yung uh, uh, what is acceptable behavior and what is a moral behavior 
So, yun, no, no? So, they overlap and yeah, they influence each other. Pero again, uh, I'd like to reiterate that they are different and can be independent of each other. Um, different. Well, religion, okay? Religion is a, uh, uh, um, a, uh, a movement, a, uh, a, so it defines the, it defines what a group of people believe in, okay? Um, uh, a religion can be a, uh, uh, atheistic religion, that is a religion that has a God, okay? <laughs> you heard me right, dahil merong religion that there, there are there are religions actually naman lang Jews okay so katulad lang sinabi lang uh, uh, meron kasi mga mga ano na uh, some kind of a way of life that uh, people are following that kind of way of life uh, in a very strict way and that uh, 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 wherein their practice, their, 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 the kind of life that they are living are strictly being followed by one generation to the next generation. So, you see, um, tignan natin ito, ha? example lang sa China. Okay? China. Uh, you may think that uh, uh, in China, there are, uh, these are very religious people. But if you are going, if we are going to, to analyze the major religions in China, which is Confucianism and Confucianism and Taoism. Okay? Yung Buddhism kasi sa India yun eh. Now, if you're going to analyze both religion, Taoism and Confucianism, wala kang makikita ang Diyos dyan. Okay? They are not going to define God there. Okay? So, ang makikita mo dyan ay a certain way of living that uh, that is in the minds of uh, the Chinese people and that they are really very strict about it uh, even if uh, uh, there is no notion of a divine being that wants them to live in that kind of way in that particular way sila ay uh, very very religious and faithful in doing what is expected from them. Katulad ng ancestral worship. Okay, so sabihin natin worship. Ano? Worship. Pero they are not worshiping a God. They are worshiping their ancestors. Ancestral worship. So the, the notion of a God is foreign in both Taoism and Confucianism. But the philosophy, the kind of life, that is being demanded as a true-blooded Confucianist or Confucian or uh, Taoist, it is really very pronounced, it is really, really very strong in their culture and in their uh, yeah, way of life. And the way, they, the way they explain the meaning of life also. So, yeah, so that is, that is religion, but then at the same time, Yun nga, no? uh, like an ethical system, that religion, which has no God, okay, again, no God, has identified and defined the kind of, uh, the kind of behavior these people are supposed to, are supposed to be doing, okay? So, eh, ang ethics ganun din, um, the... Uh, so you'll see that there is a similarity. Ethics is actually formulating the guidelines, the rules and guidelines and some standards para masabi that you are a good person, that you are uh, a moral, moral person. Okay? So again, um, if you are going to study Confucianism, Taoism, okay? And if you are going to go to India and you're going to study Buddhism, makikita ninyo that there are chapters in those religions that are dedicated to ethics. So, meron tayong tinatawag na Buddhist ethics, 
Taoist ethics, Confucian ethics, Shinto ethics. Okay? So, again, pag sinabi natin ito na ethics, it would, uh, it will tell us that, uh, it will, it, it tells us that it refers to a set of rules, okay, a body of principles wherein you can uh, distinguish one action as bad or another action as good, okay? Now, religion, on the other hand, when you think about religion, it is more about practice, no? Practice the way you are behaving or the way you are living your life, okay? So, religion is more on praxis practice the way you live your life kaya nga sabi uh, actually we are using the word uh, religious or to be religious in uh, studying okay so that means only that uh, you have to study regularly okay do your homework religiously okay or study every day okay do it religiously or kung nagpa doktor ka at uh, binigyan ka ng gamot sabihin sa iyo ng doktor you have to take your medicine religiously. So, clue na dito yun that the meaning of uh, uh, being a religious is actually uh, more on the doing side. Okay? More on the doing side. More on the practicing side. Okay? So, yan. Uh, and then, yung ethics naman, it's more on, on the definition side. It's more on... Uh, Defining the values, defining the the principles, um, uh, working on the uh, working on the uh, standards, okay, and justifications why such and such an act is good and another act is bad, okay? Why abortion, for example, is evil and why euthanasia is evil and why it is good that we should always respect life. So, ethics does not only tell us why these things are not supposed to be done. Uh, or ethics will also tell us why. Okay? Uh, so, pero pagdating, natin, pagdating sa religion, ang focus natin dito talaga is more on practice. Practice. Okay? More on how you live. Okay? More on how you live your life. Okay? Or how you live your religion. Okay? So, the non-theist religion na mga binanggit ko, Confucianism, Taoism, yeah, even though they don't have a God, but they live their lives in a very religious way. They were very strict about it. So, another point that we can say about uh, religion and ethics is that both uh, some religions provide ethical norms or rules or conduct like monotheistic religion. So, yeah. Um, again, uh, it's not just about practice, okay? It's not just about um, asking you to do certain things, ang um, religion, okay? Uh, religion will actually, some religions, like, uh, first and foremost, ito nga yung ating uh, Abrahamic religion, which is uh, Judaism, okay, mga Hudyo, and then uh, we have Christianity, tayo yon, and then we have Islam, which are also um, Abrahamic, okay? So, galing din sila kay Abraham. Itong tatlong religion na to, ito ay mga monotheistic religion, meaning uh, they only believe in one deity, okay, monotheistic. Other religions, merong maraming iba't ibang Diyos yan. Okay? So, they have a major God and minor gods, etc. Pero itong tatlo na to, the Abrahamic religion, talagang, uh, this is really very strict in teaching there is only one God. Okay? Now, uh, as, regards, uh, as regards these three, we all call them Abrahamic religion. Okay? Because all these three religions would trace its origin in Abraham. 
Kaya nga sabi, no? Si Father Abraham has many children. Okay? Sinabi natin that uh, Abraham was uh, the father of many nations. Okay? Alam nyo, uh, papano nangyari yon? Okay? So, just let me just uh, give you um, short or long kwento about this, no? In the book of Genesis, doon natin mababasa yung istorya ni Abraham. Ngayon, si Abraham, may asawa siya si Sarah. At silang dalawa ay uh, uh, matanda na pero hindi pa rin nagkakaanak. Now, in the practice of in the practice of uh, the Hebrew people back then, the Israelites, they have this certain uh, uh, liberality as regards as regards uh, sexual relationship that uh, if you cannot have a uh, child with your legitimate wife, and then yung uh, katulong ng asawa mo, okay, ng babaeng asawa, ay pwedeng, uh, pwedeng siya ang uh, piliin na anakan ng, uh, ng asawa mo. Okay? So, in this case, si Sarah, saka si Abraham, may katulong, merong uh, handmade si uh, Sarah. Si Sarah yung tunay na asawa, no? May handmade si Sarah and uh, uh, I think her name is Hagay. Okay? Hagay. Uh, babalik ako diyan mamaya pag mali yung sinabi ko. Okay, so si Hagay o si Hagar ay uh, so it's either Hagay or Hagar, ano? Uh, so uh, hindi magkaanak kay Sarah kaya ang ginawa ay uh, nakipagtalik si Abraham kay Hagar. Okay? Si kay Hagar. Pangalanan na nating Hagar. Kung mali ako, you can always check the Bible, ano? And then we can always come back to this kung mali ako. So, uh, uh, may permiso si Sarah na, si, na makipagtalik si Abraham. Para nga mag-anak sila. Ang mangyayari kasi doon, kapag nagka-anak si uh, Hagar mula kay Abraham, ang ituturing na ina ay si Sarah. Okay? So, parang ginamit lang, gagamitin lang si Hagar. Okay? So, nagkaanak nga si Abraham kay Hagar at ang pangalan ng bata ay si Ismael. Ngayon, itong si Ismael ay uh, uh, siyempre hindi siya yung talagang legitimate son through Sarah. No? Then, all of a sudden, no? uh, sa pamamagitan uh, ng uh, uh, milagro or whatever kasi si Sarah ay halos 100 years old na Okay, so alam naman natin na ang babae may expiration date pagdating sa panganganak. So, talagang milagro 'yon, no? It is a uh, <laughs> it is a suspension of the a suspension of the ways of nature, of the law of nature. Nagkaanak ang matandang si Sarah. Okay, nabuntis. Okay? At uh, siyempre, no? Hindi nila kalain 'yon. Kaya nung mga anak si Sarah ay uh, naging uh, problema ito dahil eh sino ngayon ang magiging tunay ng tagapagmana ni Abraham? Sa batas nila, sa batas ng mga un, sinaunang Hudyo, okay? hindi pa sila tinatawag na Hudyo noon. Sa batas nila, ang panganay na anak, panganay na lalaking anak ang magmamana. Pero problema ay meron ng talagang anak sa tunay na asawa ngayon at yung tunay na anak ay si Isaac. Okay? So tandaan niyo yan, ano? So meron tayo unang anak ni Abraham kay Hagar ay si Ismael. Siya na siya na talaga sana magiging tagapagmana eh pero nang anak si Sarah. At ngayon ito na ngayon ang uh, uh, gusto ni Sarah na maging legitimate na heir, tagapagmana. So to resolve the issue para hindi magkaroon ng problema, okay? Sinabi ni Sarah na uh, doon kay Hagar at saka kay Ismael na sila ay uh, lumayo na at mabuhay ng hiwalay kay uh, sa kanilang dalawa. Para ngayon ang uh, magiging uh, talagang legit lehitimong anak, the legitimate son and legitimate heir of Abraham would be Isaac alone. Ayan. Now, to cut the long story short, okay? Yung uh, lahat ng mga naging descendant ni Abraham mula sa anak niyang si Isaac, 
sila ngayon ang tinatawag nating the Jewish people. At sila yung uh, uh, tumanggap ng Ten Commandments. Okay? Uh, sila din ang tinatawag nating una, mga miyembro ng relihiyong Judaism. Okay? Juda Judaistic religion. And, uh, yeah, but the uh, the descendants, however, of Ishmael, the uh, uh, Islamic people are claiming that they were the direct descendants of Ishmael. And because Ishmael was a son of Abraham, then they are saying that they are also the descendants of Abraham. Ito yung uh, sister dito. Uh, um, para sa kanila, sila yung legitimate, okay, sila ang legitimate uh, children, uh, uh, direct, okay, descendants of Abraham. Bakit? Dahil si Ismael ang panganay eh. Si Ismael ang panganay. Okay? Uh, kaya lang, siyempre, uh, ito, it's, it's a, uh, it's, uh, maraming ano, marami tayo talaga masasabi dito na, uh, Fair ba yun? Just ba yun? But that's how things happen. Okay? So anyway, uh, both, Judah, uh, both uh, Jews and later on Christians who are uh, offshoots of Judaistic religion and then yung Islam, I, all of these religions would trace its uh, origin okay, from Abraham. Okay? So now, This monotheistic religions is very um, strict when it comes to defining what a man can do and what uh, are those things that man shouldn't do. Okay, this is uh, something that you will see very pronounced in. Uh, Uh, Jews, Jew, uh, Judaistic religion, and and in Islam, and uh, tayo din sa mga Christian religion, uh, we have a set of law, we have a set of norms or code of conduct that uh, would define what is good or bad, what is allowed and what is not allowed. Okay, and to this. Uh, To this, ano, to this, uh, at this aspect, okay, in this aspect of religion, yun ang overlapping, okay, yun ang overlapping kasi, yun nga, uh, um, the formulation, okay, the formulation of uh, um, the principles that would define what is a good behavior and uh, evil behavior, moral or immoral, is uh, in the ambit of or in the field of ethics okay uh, so uh, and that uh, this uh, religion is itong monotheistic religions na ito ay talagang um, uh, they are really taking it seriously to the, be able to define those things that are supposed to be defined in ethics okay the standard for morality the standard for uh, what behavior okay what behavior is allowed okay what actions and some of the other things okay some other ethical norms are outside the confines of religions and one can be ethical without being religious ayan no pwedeng naman talaga dahil nga uh, when we talk about ethics uh, hindi ito nakadepende sa relihiyon so there are non-believers there are people who do not believe in God who do not believe that uh, there is life after death but they are highly ethical so ethics is um, uh, a way of defining what is Um, allowed, okay. What is allowed and the kind of actions that are uh, that are ideal for a given situation. 
So let's say, for example, okay, what is the ethical way of uh, slaughtering animals? Okay, uh, or uh, uh, the ethical way of dealing with nature when we uh, cut down trees and everything. So even if you don't believe in God, you can also be very, very ethical, highly ethical person that you don't simply uh, cut down trees and everything. You have to, you are. You are very careful in uh, choosing the kind of trees that you can cut down and replacing those trees that you're cutting. Okay, so, so you know, we can, you can, we can be ethical without being religious. Okay, uh, but I don't think we can say that we can be religious without being ethical. Okay, so it's something, this is really something that, uh, 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 very difficult to reconcile. A religious person that is not ethical, hmm, parang hindi pwede, no? Pero, a non-religious person, pero ethical, yan, pwede yan. Okay? So, uh, kahit na walang Diyos, kahit hindi naniniwala sa Diyos, man can always choose to uh, be ethical. So, I hope that is already clear uh, when with uh, about uh, law, uh, religion and ethics. Okay? So, if you have any uh, questions, you can write them down and, uh, yeah, tell me all about it when we meet. Now, we move on to uh, the next part of our discussion, which is law and ethics. So, tapos na tayo sa religion and ethics, although, siguro, babalik-balikan din natin yan. We are now going to discuss, okay, the... Uh, relationship between law and ethics. Okay? So, first of all, we say that law is an ordinance of reason. When we say ordinance of reason, or the word ordinance itself, it is a, uh, uh, somehow, it's because you have the power of reason, because you are capable of reasoning, okay, then, then law exists, okay? Man comes up with laws because it is the reasonable thing to do or to have or to, uh, it is the reasonable thing to discover, okay? So if you are not the one who is going to make up the law, then um, a reason is Reason tells us that uh, one thing that man is supposed to discover is that there is a law. Okay, there is a law. So the more the more a person get to be able to understand uh, his place in the world, he discovers that he is bound with laws. Okay, so so you see. Um, when we talk about laws, uh, it is something that you assert it's uh, you assert the existence of law because it is the reasonable thing to 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 have. Okay, uh, it is not possible to not to have laws. Okay, so something like that. Law is an ordinance of reason. Okay, I hope that may I hope I made myself clear about that. So um, it's a little bit really very difficult to come up to to be able to express the idea in uh, plain English or plain Tagalog. Alam nyo naman, ano? Uh, so yeah, suffice it to say, it is not reasonable. Okay, it is not reasonable to to not to 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 have, to have no loss, okay? Because we are creatures of reason. We have the capability to understand things. And when we do understand things, okay, we get to be able to discover uh, that there are certain laws that govern things, okay? That govern uh, nature, the the emergence of life and its growth and then its death and decay. So there is a certain law. Everything is uh, um, all things. All things. 
are governed by law. So let's look at uh, the next one. Law can be eternal, divine, natural, or human. So um, reason discovers that yung batas ay maaring ito ay uh, human, natural, divine, or eternal. Okay, so the natural law here is something that the human mind, okay, the human capability to assess and discover things would uh, discover, okay, would be able to discover. So even if a person doesn't believe in God, he discovers the natural law, okay, and because he discovers the natural law, then he would be able to say and uh, realize that uh, um, he cannot act. He cannot act on, uh, or do things that are against the natural order of things. Okay, so he he would. Um, uh, ano sabihin to? He would formulate okay an ethical system based on based on the natural order of things okay so it, it's just impossible for us not to follow the natural law okay so punta muna tayo dito dito sa uh, categories of the law no we have uh, yeah we have uh, the eternal law first okay so what is the eternal law the eternal law is the expression of god's providence it is an ordinance of god based on his divine intelligence okay so when we talk about god's providence we understand we understand it as god the uh, god um taking care of everything okay providing us with all our necessities taking care of everything so uh god's providence is um uh, the power of God to keep all things, okay, keep all things uh, in existence and in uh, their proper places and proper time, okay. Now, uh, this is an intelligence of God. This is uh, the eternal law. The eternal law is the mind of God. It's simply put, it is the mind of God. And because God is totally different, then the mind of God is simply behind the human capability to totally understand. Okay, so, yun, ano, uh, just come to think about it, there are just so many things, okay, there are just so many things that are possible, okay, that are possible and uh, there are so many possibilities okay and out of those so many possibilities we are uh, we find ourselves in one in one of those possibilities okay and uh, uh, in one of those possibilities we find ourselves there and that in in that one possibility ito yung kinalalagyan natin ngayon uh, uh, we find ourselves in uh, existing in this time and in this space in this cosmos so so the other aspects of god's knowledge and intelligence hindi hindi natin kayang abutin yon okay hindi natin yon kayang abutin maybe when we die and we we get to be able to uh uh live alongside with god and uh, enjoy the beatific vision then maybe god would be able to uh would share his understanding with us his knowledge with us and that i think is one of the greatest joys in heaven you know to be able to to penetrate the mind of god okay so yung sinasabi nating the the, to be able to see the face of God is the greatest joy of all. Okay, it's actually not just seeing the face of God, but penetrating the nature of God and all of His understanding. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So one of the expressions of the mind of God 
uh, the eternal law has been imparted to man, okay? It has been imparted to man, that part of divine intelligence. And what is that thing that has been imparted to man? Okay, uh, merong is, uh, it can be uh, divine law and natural law. Okay, punta natin divine law muna. So, in the divine law, these are the things that God himself deemed necessary to reveal to man. Okay, so sa pamamagitan ng uh, uh, sa pamamagitan ng pagpapakita halimbawa ng anghel sa isang tao or uh, God himself showing and uh, in a dream showing himself to a person in a dream and delivering a message. Okay, and giving the law, okay? The Ten Commandments is an example of the divine law. The first five books of the Bible, which is, uh, uh, sabi, ng, uh, sabi ng mga Jews, this is the book of laws. Pero if you're going to uh, read the first five books of the Bible, hindi naman talaga puro batas ang mababasa mo doon, lalo sa Genesis, saka sa Exodus. Uh, it is a uh, book of story, okay? A story of all the first people, the story of the patriarchs, okay? But they consider it as the book of law. Now, uh, according to the Judaistic faith, okay? God himself, God himself revealed, okay? Revealed the laws to men through Moses, okay? So, the Ten Commandments was given to Moses, uh, and written in tablets of stones and yon ay napaka-importante para sa mga Hudyo. Okay? So these are expressed, okay? Expressed by way of writing in the in the holy scriptures, ito yung divine law. Um, sa sa batas itong mga divine law na to no, ang uh, pangkaraniwang alam lang natin, merong 10 utos ng Diyos. But if you are going to uh, really study the rabbinical writings or the teachings of the Jewish people, then you will be surprised to discover that there are, on top of the Ten Commandments, are 613 more laws. <laughs> 613 na additional laws na... Uh, kapag ka sinuri mo itong mga additional laws na ito, ay you will discover that these laws were written to ensure obedience to the Ten Commandments. So, anim na raan at labing tatlong batas na, na isinulat, okay, formulated para masigurado na yung sampung utos ay masusunod. Ganun kamahal ng mga Hudyo ang batas okay and that uh, they call this uh, both the ten commandments and the 613 laws the divine law of god okay they are written in the book of laws in fact they really love the law so much that uh, lahat ng mga uh, batang hudyo uh, they have to go to uh, uh, rabbinical schools and study the law and then they would have an initiation to the Jewish adult life, yung bar mitzvah na tinatawag nila. Ay, hindi ko alam kung anong, uh, ano naman ang para sa mga babae. No? Uh, pero they have a bar mitzvah. That is a, that is a big deal for them. Para yung, para yung na debut. Okay? Debut para sa mga lalaki doon. Okay? Uh, o, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, so, uh, at a young age, the Jews are studying the Bible. They are studying the laws. And then, uh, they, they would have a bar mitzvah. Okay? Uh, then, uh, strictly, yung mga mainstream Jews, okay? You are, uh, you would be uh, uh, seeing them. Uh, kasi marami na, rin, uh, marami na rin mga iba ibang uh, um, factions or groups ang, ang mga Hudyo. Meron mga mas modern, okay? But the very, very strict uh, Jewish um, denomination, okay? Uh, if you can call that, uh, 
if you can call them that, are um, these are the ones who, na hindi pinuputo lang kanilang sideburn. So, uh, may mga mahabang balbas. So, so, bawal sa kanilang putulin yung kanilang patilya, yung sideburn. Ang ginagawa nila doon, kinukulot nila. Okay? May, parang may curling iron. Para hindi masyadong, uh, masyadong mahaba o storbo. Okay. So, ngayon, uh, kung makikita ninyo sila, uh, they have this kind of uh, um, a box, a small box. In, that, in special occasions, they, care, they wear that small box dito sa kanilang uh, dito sa kanilang braso uh, yun ay nakatali at saka dito sa gawing noo. So, uh, I think it is called tefillin. Okay? Tefillin. Or uh, in uh, singular is tefila. Paki, uh, paki-validate na lang din. Pakitignan kung tama ako. So, it is uh, tefillin. T-E double F-I-L-I-N or T-E double F double F I L H L A H tefila okay singular yung tefila tefilin plural so what is contained inside those bags is actually passages of the law maybe not the entire maybe not the entire law of uh, uh, not the entire uh, uh, ten commandments and the six hundred thirteen laws but a portion of it or maybe the entire law okay so we don't really know. Ganon nila kamahal ang uh, ganon nila kamahal ang uh, divine law. Now, uh, so the divine law are those things that were um, revealed by God Himself to man. Okay. Then we have uh, natural law. Okay. So katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, uh, it is up to man. Uh, based on his discoveries of nature makikita niya magkakaroon siya ng uh, magkakaroon siya na the more that he understands nature okay the uh, the laws of nature um, the universe etc uh, man will also be able to identify um, the what is obviously uh, what is obviously uh, the right thing for every man to do. Okay? Uh, kung uh, alam ng tao halimbawa na noon pa, kung sa simula pa lang siguro na uh, alam na kagad ng tao na using fossil fuel, okay, can can hasten the the uh, extinction of human species halimbawa no kasi ngayon we are in danger no we are actually really in danger of uh, becoming extinct kapag ka talagang hindi natin napigil yung global warming na yan no ah uh, malaking pagbabago ang magaganap at uh, delikado ang delikado ang lahat ng buhay no Yan ay batay sa natural law. That uh, there is a process. Okay? We should uh, we should not interfere with the law of nature. Okay? And interfering with the law of nature can only well result in it can only result in uh, in trouble. Okay? Because there are simply laws that we should not break. Okay? Or man cannot really break the law. We can only break ourselves against the law. So based on the law of nature, okay, based on the law of nature, we formulate, okay, we formulate our uh, ethical system. So human law, on uh, ito naman, ito ay, uh, it is an ordinance of man. So uh, with man's understanding of the natural law, and the divine law as uh, 
as an expression of the eternal law. Okay, so yung eternal law kasi ito yung uh, talagang uh, not accessible to human reason. Pero a uh, portion of the eternal law is made uh, by God to be uh, to be accessible to man. So the thing that we can the thing okay one aspect of the eternal law ay kayang uh, kayang abutin ng pag-iisip ng tao okay at yon ay uh, una nga ay yung uh, talagang pinahayag ng Dios the divine law and then of course and then of course when man discovers the secret of nature or the secrets of nature then we can we also get to be able to understand uh, to understand this, uh, that aspect of the eternal law. So, ito, now, uh, with those understanding of the higher laws, then man formulates human law. Okay? Man can formulate human law. But, of course, man should always bear in mind that uh, when he makes up a law, it should not at least, okay, uh, at least it will not go directly against the higher law. Okay? It should not go directly against the higher law. Because uh, if you try to go against the higher law, then uh, tao lang din, ta uh, tao mismo ang masisira. No? Tayo talaga ang masisira. We cannot, again, ulit, ulitin ko ulit, no? we cannot destroy the law. We can only destroy ourselves against the law. Eh, paano mo gagawin yung uh, uh, ito ah? Uh, uh, we have identified, we have uh, we have uh, uh, already established that uh, for uh, there is this kind of law, the Newtonian law of physics, okay? That uh, for every action, there is an opposite but, there is an equal but opposite reaction. Okay? So, uh, try hard as much as you can you really cannot uh, you really cannot push a boulder to uh, uh, whatever uh, yeah basta, uh, the more that you push something it, it will push back to you okay or no two bodies can uh, occupy the same space at the same time have you seen uh, vehicles uh, have you seen vehicles uh trying to uh, occupy the same space at the same time. O, diba? Ano nangyayari? Okay? They die. They, the, the vehicles, the kotse, they crash. Okay? And then, uh, yeah. So, ano yung mga human law na to? These human laws can be legal. Ito yung mga batas of the land. Uh, uh, or it can be also uh, simply uh, bylaws of an organization or uh, the rules and regulations of a certain school or a uh, certain uh, business, okay? So, those are human laws. So, meron tayong mga tinatawag ding legal laws katulad ng uh, civil law, okay? Uh, uh, civil law embodied, of course, first and foremost, our, from our, in our constitution. Then, sa simbahan, meron din tayong tinatawag na ecclesiastical law or canon law. So, meron talagang batas sa simbahan. No? Uh, dito ay uh, mahaba-habang ar arilin yun. No? Uh, uh, when I was studying canon law, talagang pitong semesters namin pinag-aralan ng canon law. <laughs> Ganyan, kakapad ang libro. No? Uh, ha? So, tingnan natin ngayon. Ano pa susunod? One of the standards of Christian morality is the law. So when we talk about uh, when we talk about what uh, um, the kind of things that will uh, tell us whether a uh, a choice is moral or immoral, then one of the standards with which we can uh, use is the law. Another one is conscience. Okay. So, ano yung law dito? We are not referring to simply to the established uh, legal laws, okay? Or the rules and regulation of a certain organization, a school, okay? Um, it's more on uh, looking at the higher laws. And when we look at the, and when we talk about looking at the higher laws, then we are 
uh, talking about the natural law and the divine law. So, uh, these are the foundations of Christian morality. Another foundation of Christian morality or the moral standard would be conscience. Okay, so um, conscience basically is that inner voice, uh, an inner voice that tells us at the right moment uh, what we are supposed to do, whether to do to do things or stop doing things. Okay. So, the conscience usually are always talking to us at the right moment. Uh, that, is, uh, that is a topic for another discussion. So, yeah. Um, ito yung dalawang standard ng Christian morality. The, the law and conscience. So, we're gonna go back to that at the proper time. Okay? Uh, so, with that, we're done with our discussion about... Uh, relationship of uh, religion and ethics and then law and ethics now uh, let's just try to look at the way no ito yung sa susunod na slide no uh, it will look at the way uh, man is developing a sense of morality and with that we're going to ask the help of a uh, psychologist Lawrence Kohlberg who identified the three levels of morality and six stages of morality okay so uh, Lawrence Kohlberg is a uh, developmental one of the developmental psychologists and that uh, his ideas were also um, inspired by the findings of another psychologist who looked at the uh, development of a person's way of understanding things or understanding the world cognitive development so uh, he studied also the theory of john piaget uh, stages of cognitive development and side by side with that, nakita niya that there is a relationship with uh, uh, the growth of a person's knowledge and understanding and a way of uh, processing information with the growth also of a person's maturity in regards to moral reasoning. So according to Lawrence Kohlberg, Children are by nature moral philosophers they, because they have on their own they develop some kinds of moral standards that even if uh, there are no adults teaching them okay adults who teach them uh, these things are bad or these things are wrong they have in a sense um, a sense of what is right and wrong okay these standards do not necessarily come from parents but emerge from their cognitive interaction with their social environment so when they are uh, interacting with uh, their people with their uh, classmates or their uh, uh, playmates and with their siblings parents they get to be able to they get to be able to um, connect uh, reaction from adults and other people and uh, uh, with uh, some effects or consequences as either desirable or not desirable okay so uh, those things that they uh, get to be able to see became probably the um, standard or 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 the the uh, uh, origin of their sense of morality okay so so Kohlberg sought to determine whether there are universal stages in the development of moral judgments and what he found is yes uh, in people of all ages in all ages and in all cultures there is uh, some kind of pattern in the way uh, moral reasoning develops okay so uh, what will follow is uh, just a very short discussion on on uh, uh, the uh, moral the moral development theory 
uh, as developed by Lawrence Kohlberg. I know that you have already, hopefully, you uh, you still remember that you uh, this thing. Uh, I think it is part of a uh, uh, more uh, no the uh, personal development subject that you have in that you had in high school or senior high school. So um, the stages of moral reasoning that uh, Lawrence Kohlberg was able to find out is that uh, there are actually uh, three levels. Okay, level one, which is uh, preconventional, and then you have, of course, level two, conventional. Level three is post-conventional. Uh, these are these are. Uh, in each levels, this is characterized by some uh, some stages. We may say stages of uh, stages of moral moral development. Okay, so uh, so of course the first uh, the first uh, level and first two stages would refer to toddlers. Okay, uh, small children. So um, you'll see that. Uh, uh, they have uh, very small children have this uh, punishment orientation as regards their idea of what is good or bad. Okay, so uh, what is illustrative behavior about this in this stage is that they obey the rules because obeying the rules will uh, make them safe from punishment. Okay, so something like uh, if they if they uh, they learn from experience that uh, if they eat their broccoli then uh, mommy will allow him or her to have a dessert but if she did not did not finish her her veggies then there would be no dessert for her so something like uh, uh, to avoid unpleasant, okay, to avoid unpleasant consequences, then they know that they have to do something. Then uh, later on in that uh, in the childhood phase also is the reward orientation, that uh, um, they believe that uh, that uh, a certain behavior, when a, a good behavior, should always have something of a reward. Okay, uh, they should receive a reward for a good behavior. So they clean up their room. Okay, then mommy will uh, uh, treat her to a uh, chicken joy in Jollibee, uh -huh. something like that. Or when they are playing with uh, with friends, with their playmates. Okay, uh, they allow other children to touch their toys. It, of course. Um, Parang, uh, uh, give and take. So they uh, they would allow other children to touch and play with their toys if she can also play with uh, with the toys of their playmates. Okay, so you scratch my back, then you scratch mine. Okay, uh, uh, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Okay, so something like that. Uh, that then this is now followed by level two or uh, conventional morality. So conventional morality uh, level two is composed of the uh, third and fourth stages: good boy, good girl orientation. So basically, good boy, good girl orientation. You do things because you know that this is uh, uh, socially acceptable. So. You want to gain the approval of others? These are the things that you must do. Okay? So, mag, uh, sumagot ng po at opo, magmano, uh, ano pa, yun. So, may mga ganun bagay. Good boy, good girl, orientation. So, uh, the act is motivated by approval of others. Or, to uh, they are motivated in doing certain actions because they do not like to... Uh, have the disapproval of other people and then number four uh, or stage four is authority orientation meaning that uh, uh, you have to uphold the law and social rules to avoid censure of authorities and feelings of guilt about not doing one's duty 
So you do things because uh, these are the things that are expected from you by the people in authority, by your parents, by your teachers, authority orientation. So to a certain extent, it also extends to a uh, uh, laws, okay, the civil law, that uh, you don't, uh, you see, uh, you only do the things that are allowed by the law, okay, and that uh, the problem there is that what if the thing that is being allowed by the law is not in line with the higher law, so yan ang problema, no? Uh, um, babalik lang tayo doon sa sa discussion natin ng natural law at saka yung uh, divine law that uh, uh, human law okay must always be formulated in line with the higher law which is the divine law uh, and natural law which are both both of which are expressions of the eternal law okay so, kapag ka yung human law ay hindi na ito uh, hindi na nito na ipopromote at ginagalang ang ang higher law which is the natural law, okay? And divine law, then man has an obligation of course to disobey. Okay? So, but for uh, uh, many people who do not understand that kind of principle, then they would simply uh, uh, just do it because it is prohibited or allowed by law. Okay, so uh, yeah, that is a very safe way of living. Okay, so so let's just see uh, kung nasaan tayo, no? Um, I, I, would, I would like to bet that. Uh, in your age bracket, at your age bracket right now, you are uh, you are uh, college students. Then uh, there is a very strong possibility that you are well alternating between these two. Okay. Then we have uh, post-conventional morality, which is actually the uh, highest stage of morality that a person can reach. No. Uh, the fifth level or the fifth stage is the social contract orientation. Uh, these are actions are guided by principles commonly agreed on as essential to the public welfare. Principles upheld to retain respect of peers and self-respect. So, as a member of a society, then we agree to uh, surrender uh, our rights and liberties, some aspects of our uh, uh, capability to just about do anything we want, okay? And surrender this right, uh, this capability to a higher authority so that uh, um, order, okay? Order will be able to ensue, so... Uh, kung lahat ng tao kasi ay pwede niyang gawin ang lahat ng pwede niyang magustuhan then I think no one is going to be, feel safe even in even inside their houses okay so hirap ng ganon paano kung katulad niyo ako na uh, lapitin okay lapitin ng mga nagkakagusto <laughs> okay uh, di paano na yan no? wala, wala ang katahimikan ng buhay ang hirap talaga ng pagkagwa po ka, no? Napakahirap yan. Anyway, <laughs> so you surrender uh, your uh, capability to just do anything you want in uh, return for some kind of uh, security. So, uh, you surrender uh, you surrender this capability to the to someone who whom you elect as a, or whom you appoint or elect as um, as a ruler, okay, then in turn, this ruler will ensure that no one is raped, okay, no one is robbed, okay, that uh, your properties are safe, okay, hindi basta basta pa pwedeng kuhanin na kahit na sino lang, so yon, no, so you follow certain authority, yun yung social contract, okay, social contract, and then of course, number six, 
is the hopefully everybody would be able to reach this particular stage wherein a person's actions is actually defined by what he believes is a, a, a universal ethical principle or or what he uh, thinks is um, what is right and just for everyone okay that exercising and doing all these things are are uh, the right thing to do and when you do these things then you will feel to yourself that you are um, fulfilling your your duty as a human person that you are upholding your dignity as a human person and in upholding your dignity in doing so you are also affirming the dignity of others okay so something this uh, uh, le uh um, stage six the this kind of uh, thing is that uh, uh, this kind of uh, stage of moral development is um, the motivation for doing the action is simply because you know that this is the right thing to do okay regardless of the rewards okay so uh, not all of our actions are going to be known by others okay so uh, a lot of things will remain hidden okay uh, known to you alone but uh, regardless of the uh, regardless of that regardless of uh, w regardless whether this is going to be known to uh, known by other people or you're going to be recognized or not recognized what is important is that you get to be able to tell yourself you're doing the right thing and you are doing what you are supposed to do because uh, this is the right thing to do and that you feel good about yourself because you are doing what's the right thing to do okay so at the end of the day you're happy with yourself you get to be able to uh, sleep well because there would be no nagging nagging voice the nagging voice of your conscience condemning you for not doing what you're supposed to do okay so that's it for this lesson um uh for next week uh or our next lesson we're going to look at the different types of morality or ethics different types of ethics and moral philosophy thank you for listening and have a nice day.